Here is an alternate method of solving torque problems using the magnitude first method. The example given will be from static equilibrium. Therefore, it is assumed that you are already familiar with the concept of torque Static equilibrium and its conditions and have reviewed solutions to examples using the consistent coordinate method. Physically and mathematically, the two solutions are identical. The only difference is, where do we make considerations for positive and negative angles? In the consistent coordinate system method, we set up the coordinate system and right from the get-go, we declare the angles as positive or negative relative to it. Later, when we declare the second condition for static equilibrium, i.e. the torque equation, we just leave it as a row, solve it algebraically, and then plug in with the angles we have determined before. In the magnitude first method, we do still calculate the angle, but we do not insert the negative sign at this step. Hence, we only calculate the magnitude of the torque at the initial steps. It is best if I demonstrate this on an example. We have two people sitting on a seesaw, an adult who is 65 kilograms, sitting one meter away from the pivot point and a child of 30 kilograms at an unknown distance. The seesaw itself is not massless, rather it is 12 kilograms. Because torque involves distance, forces, and angles, you need to look for these clues at the very first step of reading the problem. Don't forget to take note of what is being asked for. As a force problem, you need a free body diagram. Because it's also a torque problem, you will need to include the forces where they apply and what direction they apply in. You will need to set up both the Cartesian and the polar coordinate systems. Check through all of the variables for each force, whether they are known or unknown. In this method, you do not need to yet include the negative sign for direction.
Applying the first condition for static equilibrium already demonstrates the considerations for magnitude as it too inserts the negative sign at the step of setting up the symbolic equation. When in doubt about the sign, refer back to your diagram and your declared coordinate system. Setting up the torque equation, now we check whether a torque will be in the positive angular direction around the pivot or the negative angular direction around the pivot. Remember also that forces acting through the pivot produce no torque and hence need not be included in the equation. In our example, the torque produced by the weight of the child is in the positive angular direction. The torque produced by the adult, according to our picture, is in the negative angular direction. From here on, we just solve algebraically and plug in with units, feeling safe that we have already taken care of the negative sign in the previous step. Don't forget that the last step is still that you reread the problem and check that your answers are sensible as compared to the picture.